Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name is Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So today I'm going to be doing another glue experiment. In my last video, I compared store-bought Mod Podge with homemade Mod Podge. And if you're interested in those results, you can check the comment section of this video. But today I'm going to be testing uh, E6000 glue and fabric tack. I always say that wrong. Fabric tack. <laughs> so I've been using E6000 glue for years and I really love it. It's a very strong glue. It's got some flexibility to it, which helps it hold uh, tight to a lot of different surfaces. But I recently came across the fabric tack and it's become one of my new favorites. Now these two glues aren't exactly comparable. They're kind of made for some similar things and some different things, but I just was curious how they performed, how they would perform side by side. So the E6000 glue comes in a lot of different varieties. You can get it in black and white and clear. I always just get it in the clear because for my purposes, that's the most uh, versatile. But like I said, I just wanted to compare these two glues, even though they're not exactly the same type of glue. I wanted to compare them side by side just for their adhesiveness, consistency, and their uh, usability on some different surfaces. For my first test, I just want to see what the glue looks like when it dries. So I have a piece of glass here that I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on each side and let it dry just to see. Uh, the E6000 is a self-leveling glue, they say, so I'm kind of curious what that looks like if you just leave the glue undisturbed. The one thing I will say is that both of these glues get kind of globby glue bits on the end. And I read somewhere that you can uh, put some Vaseline on the tip, so I'm going to clean that up and try putting some Vaseline on the tip, which helps to eliminate some of that glue glob on the tip. Uh, I generally use a wooden skewer just to apply my glue in a smaller um, amount, but for this test I'm just going to squeeze a little bit onto both ends of this piece of glass and see what happens. So for the first test, I'm going to test some metal. So I have a little metal button from some jeans and I'm just going to glue it to a tin can lid. And like I said, when I'm using these glues, I like to use a skewer just to apply a little bit of glue exactly where I want it.
My glue has been drying for over 12 hours now, so it should be well cured. And the first thing I noticed about the E6000 glue is that it dried just a little bit cloudy. And it's interesting because everybody says it's this self-leveling glue, which if you, I think you can see this, there is a little bit more of a bump here on the Fabri-Tac glue, but I don't know if you can see it, but I can feel there's a dent in the um, E6000 glue. So I don't really know what the self-leveling thing is important for, but <laughs> it doesn't seem like it was exactly accurate. Um, the Fabri-Tac glue is nice and clear, but it does have a bubble in it, you can see there. And it's kind of soft. It's actually more flexible than I would have thought it would be. Uh, these two little glass beads are some little recycled glass that I did in my microwave kiln. And so they're a little bit rough on the bottom because of the uh, paper that you use in the kiln but I think that helps them adhere and both of these glues seem to have a oop, oh, maybe not I was able to pull off the Fabri-Tac let's try this one more time just to make sure no it's pretty good <laughs> I can't get it um, I am curious about the elasticity of the glues I don't know if I can get this off of here it doesn't seem like it I'm not sure this is gonna this is gonna come right off so I guess it's not great for glass, but it does seem quite flexible itself. You know, they say that E6000 glue is very elastic, but this Fabri-Tac glue seems quite elastic as well. So that's my first observation. Next up, I'll do the corks. This was just sort of an afterthought, and I've already been playing with this one a little bit, and it doesn't really... This is the E6000. Didn't really hold that great. I'm not expecting this to hold. This is a little firmer, but you could easily pop those two things apart as well. So it's not great for cork. Then we have our plastic. The E6000 is, you know, I'm assuming I won't be able to pull it apart this way. Those seem good. But the twisting Oh, you know, I thought this would hold better on the twist. <laughs> Interesting. Now we can see how elastic it is, though. It does stretch a long way without breaking, which is interesting. I'm surprised it didn't hold the plastic, though. So I'm not expecting this to hold at all. No. Next up is our wood. That's good. I mean, I'm sure I could break the wood, but this is holding nice and firm. This is not as good of a seal, but I might not have gotten glue everywhere. You can see it's definitely coming apart there. Whereas this is maybe moved out on its own a little bit better so it's holding a little better but I would say they're both oh, decent for wood or not that was a little surprising the Fabri-Tac says it's good for uh, wood and it you know I mean obviously if you're not gonna torque it too much but this is definitely a stronger hold on the E6000 Next up we have our paper, and honestly I've never used E6000 glue on paper. I think it's sort of, I don't know. I guess you could if you had to. I've got some tissue paper here which you can see the glue through. The book paper, magazine paper, and some cardstock. But the one thing that is definitely notable about these two glues, if you saw my last video, the Mod Podge and the Elmer's are both water-based glues, so they really warped the paper. There was a lot of curling of the cardstock pieces, and these are not water-based glues, so neither one of them warps the paper at all. You get a nice flat finish, and you don't get any bubbling in the paper, except for the tissue paper, because it's just a little light to work with. So I would say that these are very similar in their um, use for paper. I 
believe that Fabri-Tac glue is archival quality, which means that it shouldn't yellow over time. I don't know about the E6000 glue. The other thing that I think is sort of strange about it is that, you know, you can't really seal down all your edges. But I guess in paper crafting, you don't always need to. You just want a flatter finish rather than your, you know, corners all hooked down perfectly. So those are the two papers side by side. I would say they're fairly similar. You can see the glue through the tissue paper on the Fabri-Tac glue as well. And then we've got the metal. This is my Fabri-Tac. I don't anticipate this to hold just because of the way the other tests have turned out and it doesn't really say it's good for metal. Oh yeah, that's not good at all. The E6000 glue should hold though. I mean, I, oh, hmm. not great either. Fascinating. All right, weird. And the last sample is the fabric, and I have to say I'm quite surprised about the fabric tech. I was like fiddling with this just a little bit, and a lot of it just pulled right off. So I know that the instructions tell you not to, you know, that I'm not really sure how you're supposed to use this on fabric, to be honest. Maybe more like stitches and little dots. And the, it, the instructions I saw said not to, you know, press the fabric too hard. So I think I'm going to put a little more glue on here let it dry and run it through the wash and see what happens. The E6000 glue, you can definitely see the glue through it. So it's not a good look, but it is holding the fabric where the glue is. Pretty tight, I would say. So like I said, I'm gonna put a little more Fabri-Tec glue on here and see how it comes through the wash. So I've got my piece uh, washed and dried, and the E6000 glue is pretty much unchanged. Where the glue is, it's holding pretty tight. Uh, you can still see the glue through the fabric. This was a pretty thin fabric, but you can still you can see the glue. Uh, the Fabri-Tac, this corner was a little bit loose, just a hair when I put it in the wash, but obviously it's come quite loose. Well, good grief, it doesn't seem to hold at all. I don't understand this glue, seriously. Um, all right, now here, over here, I did try to smooth this glue out when I put it down the first time. Now this is where I re-glued with just the little tacking type stitches, and it does seem to be holding better. I'm sure I could still rip it off of there, but it's uh, it's got a firmer hold for sure. The thing I don't understand about it is if you wanted your edges glued down smooth, uh, you know, you're going to have, if you use the little fabric tacking, you're going to have loose uh, edges to your piece. So, and uh, where I spread out the glue, it is kind of stiff. So, I guess I don't really know how to use it on fabric. <laughs> this last heart here is really from my uh, Mod Podge and Elmer's glue test. And this has been through the wash twice now. This is just applied with Mod Podge. And it actually, you can, you can smooth the glue all the way to the edge. You can see it's coming up a little bit. But if you wanted to put glue on your whole piece for kind of more of an applique type process, I would actually recommend the Mod Podge myself. But it does make the fabric stiffer. So you do have to consider that. But since it was on there, I just wanted to mention that that is my Mod Podge heart. And it has been through two launderings now and is holding up really well. So I guess what I'm saying is I wouldn't use either one of these glues, the E6000 or the Fabri-Tac for uh, flat applique type pieces on fabric. M maybe it works for uh, hemming or if you're gonna stick flower, you know, bulkier fabric pieces together where you just need a little bit of glue and you don't have flat pieces where you want the edges to be adhered down to the fabric. 
So I was a little surprised by the results of both of these glues. The uh, Fabri-Tac does say that it bonds fabric, lace, glass, leather, wood, and trims. It does have a fast grab and it did dry very clear. The acid-free is the archival piece of it so the glue doesn't yellow and then it says it's washable. So I have to say I was pretty surprised that it didn't hold the, gla the glass pieces together and it didn't even really, you could peel the glue right off of the glass. Um, it didn't hold the metal which isn't surprising, it wasn't supposed to. Plastic again, cork didn't hold it all. The wood, um, maybe I just didn't have enough glue on there but it had a more brittle hold even though the glue seemed pretty flexible. It was a kind of a more brittle, if that makes sense, grip than the E6000 glue. Um, it is good for paper, obviously it doesn't warp your paper at all and it is acid free which means it's archival and won't yellow. Uh, the fabric was sort of a weird test. Uh, it does hold where you just tack it, it's got a pretty tight hold. Where the glue is, it is a little stiffer. Uh, and like I said, I don't think it would be a great glue for like a, a applique kind of type uh, fabric pieces. So that was the Fabri-Tac. Even though I was surprised by the Fabri-Tac results, I was actually more surprised by the E6000 uh, results because I expected that it would hold the metal together. I wasn't as surprised that it didn't hold the plastic, but um, yeah, I thought it would hold the cork as well. So uh, I will still use it. It's a great strong glue, but I was just surprised by those results. It did seem to work really well on the glass and the wood. Uh, it also works okay on the paper, but I, I don't, it does not say that it's it, acid free, so it might yellow over time. You probably wouldn't be your first choice for scrapbooking projects. So that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already become a subscriber. And if you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments. I hope to see you in the lab in the next video. Thanks for watching.